Hell RT with that capital H. This project is on schedule to be finished by December 2020. It's approximately the size of a car or bigger. There was some oxidation occurring in some of the signaling cables. The design of the internal steel reinforcement was inadequate, resulting in cracks in the piers. I believe more in my customers and the community than I do in Transat. After years of frustration, people can now ride the Valley Line Southeast LRT from Millwoods to downtown. It was built by a consortium of companies called Transed. It opened nearly three years behind schedule, bogged down by delays. CBC Edmonton looked into what happened, and in thousands of pages of documents not made public, we found a litany of flaws, starting with design and construction. In 2018, work stopped on one part of the project for six months after workers mistakenly cut through steel rebar at the existing Churchill station. A concrete pier along the elevated track near Davies Station was torn down in May 2019 due to, quote, deficiencies. The concrete lining in the tunnel also had to be rebuilt due to quality issues. Then, part of the Dewatana bridge deck had to be removed and recast because of concerns with the concrete. Then there was the traction power substation that didn't meet the Canadian electrical code. These are just a few of the highlights we found in internal reports and shared with several current and former city councillors. Some problems were unavoidable. Uh, I'm not sure that all the ones on your list were unavoidable. I think there's probably some regret and uh, you know some wishing that it could have been done different. City Council got regular updates on the status of the project. Councillors we spoke with said they weren't given the details found in documents through CBC's Freedom of Information requests. I would have liked to have known more, but I can understand if they decided not to share some things because of that apprehension of information finding its way into the public realm before they were ready to have it in the public realm. We also talked to city administration who say their job was to keep track of what TransEd was doing. There are issues that materialize and what you do is your best to try and mitigate or minimize the risks that could materialize. Council isn't usually shared that information. Council is responsible for holding administration accountable and we are in turn responsible for holding TransEd accountable, which we have. We asked Edmonton Mayor Amarjeet Sohi several times for an interview. Before he was mayor, he was the federal infrastructure minister during the early years of the project. He declined an interview but sent a statement. It is inherent to all large construction projects to encounter some deficiencies. What is critical is how the contractor responds and remedies these issues. It is city administration's responsibility to oversee this contract. And it's massive, a nearly $2 billion line spanning 13 kilometres. So how badly did it go off track? We asked an expert and she says on a project this size, issues aren't unusual. We need to take seriously that big things take time, they take money, and if we want to do them well, we have to leave space for that. Big projects will always be a little bit late. TransEd says some of the structural and design issues didn't take long to resolve, but monthly reports to the city show otherwise. For example, in 2019, a report noted that, quote, quality issues with final concrete lining for the quarters tunnel have resulted in significant delay to construction. That same report shows quality issues with concrete on the Duatna Bridge pushed the schedule further behind. It's described as a, quote, critical item, and the schedule is slipping. TransEd declined an interview request, but responded to questions by email. A spokesperson told CBC that large infrastructure projects are complex and will always have issues that need to be resolved as part of the course of work. Several people we spoke with say the nature of the project led to problems. It's a P3, a public-private partnership. The city got money from the feds in the province to help pay for the line and hired a private company, TransEd, to build it. TransEd then assumed the risk if anything were to go wrong. It's a model some say is worth a second thought. There's a mythology about P3s that they're going to be cheaper and you're transferring risk, which mostly hasn't come to bear. And so we have this idea, and if you make it more the private sector's business, they'll manage things more efficiently, but also if things start to go wrong, it's on them instead of on the public. The city maintains taxpayers are not on the hook for delays, as TransEd is responsible for fixing and paying for problems on the line itself. Other costs, though, go beyond the money. 
The people that are paying for this line ultimately, our taxpayers, our residents, don't get to use what they paid for for three years after they get it. That's not fair at all. And that is our cost. We as a, as a collective, we as a community paid. We paid through our time, we paid through our frustration, we paid through our confidence. So uh, absolutely, there are costs. It's not clear how much the problems will cost TransEd, but in the past two years, the city reported to federal officials that TransEd was feeling the financial consequences of the delays. Now it's up to transit users to judge whether it was all worth it. The company is on contract to run and maintain the line for the next 30 years. Natasha Reeb, CBC News, Edmonton.